Oh, come on in, clap your hands this morning. But this is the day, y'all ain't catching it, but this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. We should be rejoicing this morning. Because you could have been dead. You should have been dead. But since God gave you life and breath, you should be on your feet and giving God the glory. Giving God the glory. Giving God the glory. Giving him the honor and the praise. Y'all ain't catching this. I just buried my grandmother yesterday. But since God gave me life, health, and strength, I had to come to a place where I know I can be revived, rejuvenated, and replenished. So I can be challenged, charged, and changed. Glory to God. We're going to bring up Pastor Hall for our prayer of consecration. Amen. 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 Well, Chris, the request of pastor. Try Jesus. Oh, he's all right. Try Jesus. Oh, he's all right. Try Jesus. Continue to strengthen the sick, shed in bereaved families, the widows, the widowers, and the homeless. Lord, you know we all stand in need of, so we ask that you continue to move by your power, your might, and your spirit. Lord, we want to just ask that right now in the name of Jesus, that you move on this church service like never before. Not just at the mount, but every church is open in the name of Jesus today. Have your way all over this land. God, we're going to try you today because we know that you are right. So we ask that you continue to strengthen our pastor. Move him out the way. Allow your Holy Spirit to get in the way. God, the word that he got for us, we ask that you open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual ears, so we can hear and see what you would have for us to do. God, we thank you today. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So we're going to thank you with the one we got. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, God, for continuing to do what you're doing. God, have your way. Move by your power, your mighty spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, come on and clap your hands for God today. Amen. And now we will have our devotion by our deacons and deaconess. Amen. Deacons and deaconess for devotion. Amen.
Jesus, keep me near the cross. I will be reading from Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise unto God, well. all ye lands. Yes. Sing forth with honor of his name. Yes. Sing unto God. How terrible are thy works. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So the greatness Say unto God, yeah. how terrible art thou works. Mm -hmm. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Mm -hmm. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the works of the Lord. How terrible in his doing towards the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. And they went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. Behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. For thou, O oh God, hast proved us, thou hast tried us, as silver is tried. Thou brought us into the net, Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings, and I will pray thee my vows. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Come on and clap your hands for God today. Oh, you could do better than that. Come on and clap your hands for God. Not for me, but for God. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Been 
COVID could have took me out. But I owe God a praise because he brought me here today. Come on, Joe Biden. How many know that God is great? How many? I need you to talk back to me this morning. How many know that our God is great? Do you love him this morning? Can y'all help me sing this song? Listen.
Let me hear y'all hope. Like, what is it? Yeah. This is the song that's in the fullness. Come on. In the power. Me up. Come on, say you lift me up.
your strength. He's your strength in everything that you need. Woo. Stop trying to hold everything and fight the enemy on your own. It's not yours to carry. at this time. that is coming swiftly around the corner. Amen. We, there are some know the obligation. There are some that do not know the obligation. Regina, can you please raise your hand? If you need to know the obligation, please see Regina after service and she can give you a paper. Amen. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Amen. Like today and celebration Sunday. Every second Sunday is our Women of Zion. Women, where you at this morning? And every third Sunday is our Men of Abraham. Oh, they got us today, ladies. Y'all got us today. But every fourth Sunday. 
Sunday is our future. Let's give it up for our youth. <laughs> Boy, they throwing shade up there. Amen. Every Monday night is the Men of Abraham prayer and Bible study. Amen. Men of Abraham, can you raise your hand? If you know of any neighbors, men neighbors, co-workers that would like to be a part of something very powerful and great, these great gentlemen of Abraham can get you on the line. Amen. Amen. Men of Abraham. Amen. And every Tuesday night is the pray team debriefing and Bible study and practice. Amen. That's at 7 p.m. Also, every Wednesday night is our youth Bible study. That starts at 7 p.m. Amen. And also on Thursday night. Someone say Thursday night. Thursday night. At 7.15, as you see on the bulletin, on the TV, is our powerful Bible study brought to you by our very own overseer, Pastor Stanley L. Murray. Amen. All right, so we got some upcoming events. If you have a piece of paper, please, 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 please write down. July the 23rd at 4 p.m., Pastor will be preaching at Greater St. Paul AME Church off of Paramore Avenue. October the 22nd, 2023 at 10 a.m., Pastor will be preaching in Tangelo. Amen? Amen. November the 5th, Pastor will be preaching at Have Faith Outreach. That's at 11.30 a.m. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. And also youth vacation Bible school. I'm excited about it because Elijah's going to be up there. Starting the week of July the 17th, that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be vacation Bible school. Tuesday and Thursday will be piano lessons. Amen. Amen. Lady Alls, Pastor Alls. If you'd like to be a part of something great, please see the and Minister Mumford to sign your kids up. That's the week of July 17th, and that is swiftly coming. Amen? Amen? Amen. Do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand. We want to honor you today. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. If you are a Mount Zion member, I need you up on your feet this morning. Listen, listen. That's the way we honor our visitors here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. All right? Say one, two, three. The song says it's good to see you. Come on. I like that, y'all. Welcome to the service of the Lord. Come on, say, welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, Zion, lift your voice, say, it's good to see ya. Come on. Touch your neighbor, say, welcome to the service of the Lord. Oh, come on, welcome to Mount Zion. Now, listen, we do a third thing. Rock with it. I can't do it like that, though. Come on. Y'all can have fun with it. Come on. Now, Tyree, I need you to turn that thing around, boy. Come on. Welcome to the mountain. Come on, say, welcome to the service of the Lord. Welcome into Mount 
may be seated. <laughs> now we we'll have our very own overseer, Pastor Strindley Murray. Amen. So, first lady, we need you up here. If you don't mind. We need you. Can you come up here? Right here. Amen. So, I've been getting these crazy videos lately. That's, that's what I'm. The, the internet is now. You know, it's. Um, you gotta be real careful, Quan, with you. Stuff just show up on your phone. But, so, I've been getting these videos about why men don't come to church, people don't come to church, black people don't come to church, Hispanic people don't go to church, white folk don't go to church. I'm saying all these different people is just people. But one of the most critical things that have really, I guess, hurt my heart was is sometimes your biggest servers in the church are the ones God put in charge. Why? Because they're the ones who have the most dedication. They're the ones who have the most attention to the, because what? God gave it to them, right? My good sister over there, she has an event business like uh, first lady and I'm sure nobody works harder than you right no matter who you bring over there it's your business because God gave it to you this is Toronto your makeup business nobody no matter how many classes you teach no matter proteges you bring in they're not as dedicated as you are so I want to take a moment uh, please don't don't twist it but we have someone who works very, very hard, sometimes harder than you guys would think. Sometimes they think that a certain person just sits and looks pretty and wears big hats and skins and grins and waves at y'all and she's not approachable or touchable or... But we have a working first lady to make a murder. Put your hands together. So, Sister Minister Shaw, Who I think is trying to dig herself out of a hole. <laughs> Wants to bless her first lady today. Oh, come on and clap your hands for our first lady. So 12 years with her beautiful first lady. Who I learned so much by what the do's and the don't as a wife, as a clergy and how I must conduct myself even when it hurts. Want to honor you today, Reverend Keo. You have been appointed. Must be nice. Oh. I ain't getting no purse. <laughs> Amen. Do we have any July birthdays? Anybody born in July? Oh, stand up. You're born in July. Stand on up. Only one person? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay. 
All right. So what we need to do? I'm excited, God. Any anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? Marvin, really? He want a baby and a wife so bad. He better. Boy, you better hold up. It's your birthday. It's your anniversary. Oh, Jody back working. Jody, if you watching, happy anniversary to you and Mother McCullough. Wish you well. God bless you, Mother. Amen. I believe mean, God wants to have greater in our lives. I'm a firm believer that if you just keep your eyes on him, not on your problems, keep your eyes on him. How many believe it's time for us to honor God where we can? Amen? I'm going to say where I must. Amen? I was talking with some, some young people the other day. And they were asking me about how important it was to give because they, they, you know, they've kind of been around other people that say, it's, you know, the church just wants your money. And I said, well, Walmart wants your money too. <laughs> McDonald's wants your money. Huh? <laughs> That's why they got the drive through so they don't have to deal with you long. Wow. Talk back if you can. <laughs> But I just want to inform you that this is a place where, what I call good ground. If you leave out of here and go down this hallway and look on your left, you'll see the picture of the wall of what we believe God is going to bless us with in a few years. Amen? Well, it, 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 it takes finances to get there. And it takes finances to even keep up what we have here. Um, so when you do give, trust me, I put it on the ground. We just went to visit a second church uh, last week. One of the tires blew out on our three passenger bus. But because I was so concerned about the safety, I replaced all four of them in the back. Amen. Okay? Amen. Um, so it costs us about $1,200. So I'm just asking that you would help us replenish to be ready for something else that might occur. Amen? Amen? It's one thing when something happens and you got it. It's another thing when something happens and you don't got it. So I would like to be a, a place that when something happens, we can be good in knowing that we're prepared to deal with it. So when you give this morning, ask God, Lord, what would you have of me to do? I know what I did this week at Starbucks. Corner store. I know I'm in a scratch on sub ball. Wow. <laughs> Talk about it, sir. I know about how many pineapple and strawberry and black and miles I ball. <laughs> I know how many bottles of shampoo I drink. But I just sell that to say, guys, if you don't mind sacrificing just a little bit. Please help us to do what we need to do today to make sure we're prepared. Uh, it takes a lot to be relevant. It don't take nothing to be irrelevant. Amen? So I challenge you to say that you are necessary and you are needed, not because of what you do, not because of what you say, but because of who you are. And if you believe who you are, you'll know what to say. Amen. And you'll know what to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Please, 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 one more announcement before we get into offering. We had about 12 kids Wednesday night. Yes, we did. 13. Yes, put your hands together. Yeah. So please bring us your youth. Bring them here so we can help them. It, I don't know. I, I, it's hard being a, a young lady, a young boy in school right now. The challenges these children have, guys, we gotta be honest, we didn't have them. It's hard growing up now. 
even though things look easier, it's harder being distracted because of these things that make things easier. See, we went to bed at 9 o'clock. We know nothing about no 12 o'clock still sitting on Instagram and somebody. TikTok. We, we didn't have that, Sister Rado. Mama said, go to bed. You went to bed and the TV went off by itself. They ain't need your help. We looked after one another in our communities. We fed other people's kids like they were our own. Those things are missing now. We got people living next to each other, don't even speak. You ain't know who your neighbors are. You've been living at 10 years. And you pass them with cars going in and out of garages. Life has changed. So let's take care of our family here. Amen? Are we not family? Y'all no, real quiet. We're not family? Amen. If you wish to give electronically, we got our QR code fixed. We're going to take you directly to our website page where you may be able to give towards that electronically, your type, your offering. If you want to go in the back, step to the back, and one of our general back there will help you to our finance area. Amen. If you just need an envelope, raise your hand for any cash or check, and we'll get that over to you. God is a good God, is he not? Amen. Let's go. He'll stand up from the rear. Bring him around, Tonio. Listen. in heaven we thank you for this offering which we have received oh god we ask that you bless it sanctified multiply it oh god let it be useful uplifting thy kingdom oh god lord we ask you to bless those that gave those that have the desire lord to give but had not lord all these blessings we ask in jesus name amen, amen. amen. oh come on and clap your hands for god today are y'all ready to go higher Now we will have our scripture reading by our very own Pastor Avery. Amen. Can we still can we please stand for the reading of God's word Amen. in honor and reverence of God's word? Yes. Asking everyone if you can and will if you stand. Our scripture is going to be coming from 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. 
It says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming is as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse six, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect pressures, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Please remain standing. Now it's time for the main course, which is the word of God. Can you touch your, stretch your hands out this, this way, amen? Say, Pastor Murray, preach the word. Pastor Murray, preach the word. Pastor Murray, preach the word. Come on, do you believe God is doing something special? You believe God is doing something special in your life? You believe He did something special over your kids? You believe He did something special over your wife? You believe He did something special over your husband, your mother, your brother, your sister? You believe He did something special over you? Just wave your hands and neighbor. I'm glad to see you today. Amen. So let's get rid of all this. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. This I lay my burden down. Glory, glory. Come on.
Bibles if you will. Grab your Bibles if you will. Amen. Woo. My God. <laughs> That's your son. Luke chapter 6. <laughs> My God. All right. the son. Amen. I'm excited about this word. We're going to be strong. It won't be long. And, and Richard, I don't know if it's me, but have your baby boy check that, that thermostat on the way out for me. <laughs> it's a little warm, but we're not going to keep you long, guys. I want to look at Luke chapter 6. I want to start with verse 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. If you find it, just stand for a moment while we read the word of God again. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. He said, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him but he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand rise up and stand forth in the midst and he arose and stood forth then Jesus said unto him I will ask you one thing is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil to save life or to destroy it Verse 10 was the pilot text. And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole. As the other. And they were filled with madness. And communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. You may be seated. Giving honor to our God. His son that died on Calvary's cross to our couple to yet still the Holy Spirit. To our guests thus far, we pray you have experienced and you have felt the power and the presence of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. We're proud to announce Sister Vanessa, her daughter, is visiting with us today. Hey. She's going to get married, y'all. Ooh, must be nice. I ain't know if I could tell your business, Glenda, that's why I say that. <laughs> but I just told it. <laughs> I'm so petty. <laughs> but congratulations. <laughs> to the best church my side of heaven. <laughs> I try to be a transparent pastor. I don't always get it right, but I do try to be righteous. We had a leaders meeting this morning. And I made an apology to our leaders from our clergy level that I will now bestow upon you. In my opinion, despite what I've been hearing, 
I do not believe that we gave excellence from the pulpit. We could have done better. So I immediately let my clergy know after service how important it is to present nothing but sheer excellence before God's people. Because you never know what someone is going through when they come here. So we had a leadership training to, to, to today. And we really just went over things that you would think we would already know. But we talked about our church scripture, our vision, and our mission statement, firstly. To inform them that if you don't know it, how would you be able to really share? Yet, if you don't believe it, why would anyone else believe it? See, it's easy to get people to come to your church. No matter how y'all make it sound like it's hard, it's really easy. Getting people to stay is the challenge. People hear you, but may not listen to you, but they're always watching you. And if your life don't match your lips, it confuses them. Now, we're all human beings, are we not? Yes, sir. Sometimes we don't say what we're supposed to say right. We don't do what we're supposed to do right. But this is the beautiful thing about church. Church is the place where mistakes are made, but miracles still happen. Amen. Amen. If you believe that, put your hands together. <laughs> so it's a very important upon us to make sure that we have wronged in any way to make it right. So when God gave me the scripture this week, I was like, oh, okay, you're going to get personal. Verse 10 says, Jesus looked around at all of them. And he said to the man, let me see your hand. And the man stretched out his hand and it was completely healed. I almost forgot my baby. Put your young girl for my boo-boo today. Let me kill that lie. Ain't say nothing about his wife today. They must be arguing. Child, I tell you, ain't no such thing as all good days in the world. And we don't always have good days, but we have great days in God. Amen? Now, let me help y'all. We don't always see eye to eye. Type A, I'm type A plus. So we double A plus. I'm some heavy duty batteries right there. But I love my boo boo with all that I have. But this particular text, it was funny as I read this, I read this, I read this. This man, he 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 was, Jesus decided as he was teaching on the Sabbath. And if you know anything about Jewish law, uh, Hebrew law, they were very, very particular about dealing with those that they call afflicted. Grandma called it afflicted. College graduates call it afflicted. But basically, anyone who had any type of infirmity, any type of personal issue that you could see or observe or smell or whatever, the priests did not indulge with folk. And Jesus saw it a much different way. Uh -huh. That it was important to meet people where they were uh -huh. rather than trying to get them where you want them to be. Uh -huh. Come on. And sometimes in our Christian walk, if we're not careful, we begin to bourgeois this thing called Christianity of us against them. Those of us who believe and those of us who don't. And that's not really what it's about. It's not that we're better than anybody else. However, we must be different. By being different in God, it makes us better within ourselves. So these priests, they, they, they watch to see what he would be doing in church. Now he in church. He in church talking to someone who needs a blessing. And they're waiting to see if he's going to help bless them. Oh my God. 
This is going to make sense in a minute. And sometimes you go to places of worship where somebody got a shout and they just want to praise God and we're <coughs> telling them, don't do that. Don't, we don't do that here. Don't do that. We don't do that here. Babies holler. Ooh. Somebody say amen. amen. So Toronto, if your baby want to holler, let him holler. Somebody say amen. 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 We have now confined this thing to we don't even preach the word of the God anymore. We have casual conversations mm. about how much God loves you and that you're going, you're a good person. But good people don't go to heaven. Come on, sir. Godly people go to heaven. What was the difference between a good person? And a godly person. I'm glad you asked this. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> Good people do what they believe is morally correct. <coughs> the problem with that is morals can be different depending on where you're from well. or how you were raised. What do you mean? Some people believe that you should not spank your children. You should have a timeout session. You should put them in a corner. However, I was not a part of that faction. <laughs> I wish I might have been, but I was not. I was more on what they call the laying hands ministry. <laughs> Talk back if you can. Come on, Reverend. Ah, and one of the most critical things that I could never figure out, Mother, when Mama used to say, this gonna hurt me. More than gonna hurt you. I didn't understand it, Quan, because it looked like I was getting all of the hurt. And I don't know about you, but when I think about it, it hurts God to have to chastise us. It hurts him that he has to do certain things to get our attention to come back to him and acknowledge that we've made mistakes. Well. And sometimes in our lives, if we're not careful, we will justify our mistakes to a point that we don't even make mistakes. It's always somebody else's fault. Come on, sir. And this particular part of what Luke was trying to remind us of, he said, Jesus looked around at all of them and said to the man, let me see your hand. The man stretched out his hand and was completely healed. If I had a way to encourage you today, look at your neighbor. To neighbor. neighbor. Pastor's going to preach about. Pastor's going to preach Let's straighten. It out. Come on up, Reverend. Ah, let's straighten it out. Uh huh. Now that was one of my favorite songs, Deacon Croker, back in the day. You know, I used to hang in the drip joint, the hole in the wall. That was me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't always. When I got when I got free to win the military, I partook of the world. I know y'all was all sanctified. Y'all had never done nothing. But for some of us who had a chance to get out rough, I made sure it wasn't a party until I got there. Talk back if you can. Frank, brother, I was good at it. Amen. But when he set me free uh -huh. and told me, rah, rah, I ain't got to be out all night long. Took my all white party and made it a baptism. Y'all don't know, okay. But this particular man, he, he, he was there in the synagogue. He was there in the church with an obvious issue that the people who were in position to help him were not going to because the customs they believed weren't correct. Yes, by the Jewish law, it was not right to deal with the afflicted. However, was it righteous? Well. And Jesus came to bring to our attention that sometimes we've been doing things that look right on paper, but in reality, we're not blessing anybody, so it's sending people back to a place that they cannot get out of. Well. And so we got to ask ourselves, am I a believer, a follower of Christ that I educate myself in learning that what I say and what I do is based solely because of who I am? Uh -huh. So I ask you today, who are you? 
Right. I'm not talking about your practices. People make mistakes. People say wrong things, do wrong things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your principles, the core person of who you are. If you say you are a blessed, washed believer, if you say God speaks to you, if you say God deals with you, then why does everybody have to beat around the bush to tell you the truth? Holy Ghost, they never told you to get here on time? Well. <laughs> you go to a job where they care. Can I be transparent? I know y'all believe. You do know everybody in your job don't care about you, right? <laughs> Especially if you got an employer the weak child. She thinks she all that. She got an employer the money. <laughs> you think people, they don't care. So you have to start asking yourself, I do what I do because God is my God and I believe that what I do sets an example of showing people that if you just trust in the Lord and lean on his understanding, you will find a way to help somebody who's in a hole coming to work, coming to a school, coming to a job, coming to church, saying, I don't know if I can make it through the day. You can touch him on the shoulder and say, sis, bro, just trust in the Lord. Well, not some, not most, but all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. He will take care of you. This man, Jesus got into a little debate with those scribes and Pharisees who, verse 7 said, watched to see if he would heal them. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, quit coming to church looking for relief. That's what you get at Walgreens. There is nothing in the hospital that can heal you. Come on, Reverend. It only can subside your symptoms while your body heals itself. Yeah. I got a medical folk, amen, on that. Amen. Because you begin to understand, people are coming to the house of God saying they want to be healed, but they really just want their symptoms to go away. But I stop by to tell you, if you really want to be healed, then you got to go through some things. You got to let the scab, y'all not catching this. Sometimes you got to let it heal and you got to let it go where it needs to go. But as mama used to say, quit picking at it. God has given you a place to forgive somebody, but you keep picking at it. God is helping you with your finances in your marriage, but you keep picking at it. God begins to set you up for greater on your job, but you keep picking at it. God trying to get you in your mind when well, you ain't crazy. There ain't nothing wrong with you, but you keep picking at it. Come on, Red Red. Good work, sir. Now keep picking at it. And so you don't allow it to heal properly. Uh huh. Dare I say it? Some of us are even putting band aids over gunshot wounds. Well. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Oh, no, sis, you don't lie support. It. <laughs> and if you don't deal with it, you don't get the bullet out. It's going to cause inflammation. It's going to cause inflammation. Am I wrong? Am I right? And sooner or later, you're going to lose the excess of that limb. And here this man was with a withered hand, and he couldn't do what normal people get to do. And this is why I give honor to my deacon like I do, because I would not know how to survive in this environment that he's in every day of his life. So I don't complain about a little chest pain. I don't complain about a little headache. I don't complain about my leg or my back or my neck or what's wrong with me because I recognize as he tells me Pastor, I'm blessed. How dare I sit here on this earth and complain because something ain't working the way I want it to work. How dare I get into my feelings because somebody to say what I wanted them to say. How dare I find myself with an attitude because things ain't working my way when I'm seeing people who would trade places with me. You know one of the most humblest things is if you want to go to the hospital, Richard, and them people got to wash you because you can't wash yourself. That's when it get real. When you can't make it to the bathroom, they got to put a catheter in. When they got to put a diaper on you. And you sitting there listening as you go on yourself. 
Y'all not, y'all not, y'all quiet. This is good. How dare I come back into the real world and not honor God? Our washing machine went out the other day. And I asked Pastor Alls, he would come, and him and his son came and helped me load it on a trailer, and we took it to, for them to fix it. And I thought it would be ready Friday, but Saturday, but it wasn't quite ready. So Saturday night, I realized that Grandma said I needed some washables. All right, so I got my nice, pretty black leather bag, uh -huh. and I pulled up to the laundromat in my fine automobile, <laughs> and I walked in there like I come in there every week. <laughs> However, can I be honest? I've been out the game for a little while. <laughs> Just to walk in there and sit in the lounge room and go, boop, do what you do. I went in there and I ain't had no soap powder. That's laundry detergent for your college graduate. Sis, I went in there, nice little Spanish lady was there, and I came in and she was cleaning, just cleaning. And I said, ma'am, I said, uh, can I get some soap? She said, oh, sure, please. She gave me one of those big, big old, big old Tide pods. Man, I didn't make them that big. Yeah, yeah. I don't wash the clothes. <laughs> Man, we, we, we talked in the car. <laughs> Sometimes I tell my wife, let me be me. Let me be in charge. Let's, 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 so, <laughs> so I get in there. I get the soap pod. I go to the machine. She said, you need to get quarters. I get the quarters, mama. Putting the quarters in. Turn it. Yeah, it works. Clothes go around and around. So I had nothing to do. So I did what I used to do when I was young. Went out there, boy, I opened all four doors, airing on the car, put on me something about get down music. I wiped my car down, enjoying life. Life is just so good and pretty. That's the point. I just feel like I was young again. Got ready, went to get my clothes, went to the dryer. Lady helped me put stuff in the dryer. Still cleaning. This lady ain't sat down the whole time I'm there. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So it's, you know, my motto, Lord, who would you have me? I got ready to leave. Took out a nice size bill, not a dollar. Walked over to the lady. And I gave her this. She says, You want change? I said, No, ma'am. That's for you. She started tearing up. Wow. And she just pointed at her, I didn't notice, but I looked behind the counter. She pointed at her little daughter who was sitting in the corner. Now, I don't know what that money was going to do for her. But obviously, she needed something that her daughter. What am I saying? I'm glad my washing machine broke. I'm glad Pastor them came and helped me put it somewhere. Because I never would have met that lady. What am I saying? Quit complaining. When God put you in an exigent circumstance. Because he's really trying to set you up to bless somebody else. Amen? Not to bless you, bless somebody else through you. So when I look at this particular text, here Jesus is in the synagogue ready to do something that, that lawfully they don't want him to do. That's right. And sometimes, guys, when it's time to help those people, that's why you got to be careful where you're putting your your, 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 he said, cast not your pearls to swine, put not your seeds upon rocks. Why does he use these definitions? What he's saying is, quit putting things to people, places and things that God don't get the glory. They can't be edified by it because they don't see it as such. So ask God, who would you have me to bless? Amen. And so this man is sitting there. Mm -hmm. And so God comes to him and he says, looking upon them all. Sometimes in the environment where you're trying to help people, folk upset you're trying to help them. They mad or they, or, they, or they jealous because you're trying to help a certain person God told you to help. Not who you think you should be helping, who God told you to help. But dare I say it, let me help you with this. Sometimes we confuse helping people 
with people who like they got nothing. Let me help you. Because I know people who have material things, but spiritually they have nothing. And so sometimes you have to say, God, who would you have me to help in an environment of knowing that when I helped them, that was right when they were asking God for help. So he says, let me see your hand. Now, we're talking about, let's straighten it out. First point, the problem must be seen. Okay. Amen? Amen? We have to actually admit that there is a problem. Okay. And so many times in our lives, we deny that there's a problem. I'm good. You all right? Yeah. You good? I'm good. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I said I was good. <laughs> you sound good. You ain't good. Some of us will keep lying to ourselves about what's bothering us. What's eating at our spirits. And some of it we just need to go to God with, but we're trying to find a person to put it on. Because if you just take it to God, He'll begin to manifest it to where it needs to go and what it's supposed to be. Yes. And I hope you hear me clearly as I speak this word tonight. When he's talking about let's straighten it out, you got to start that. The only way to get it straight is to get on the road called straight. Right. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Right. Do you have the forgiving spirit for God to utilize you? Who is still binding you? What is still happening to you? What is still bothering you that you can't get it straight? They sleeping with both eyes closed. But you standing there with the withered hand. That means that's one hand less to help somebody. So then he says, the man stretched out his hand. How many times has God came to you and said, bring it to me. And you did it. Yeah. Help somebody today. Can I walk this? Come on, walk the Reverend. How many times did God say, just come forth and let me help you? Come on now. And because you put your situation over your salvation, because you were so upset about what they did to you, because you were so angry about how you felt you were treated, you refused to get your blessing so you get to keep your burden. Mm. Wow. I love it. <coughs> so the man is saying, stretched out his hand. Now, point two. See, I'm going to be quick. The problem must be seen. Now he's saying, the problem must be serious. Okay. See, sometimes we don't take our problems serious enough. The stuff we need to address with God. The foolishness, well, we all is. The stuff we do it on the back end, the car, the parking lot conversation, stuff that keep us all upset. Toronto, we can't even can't even can't even eat. <laughs> go to go to Corral, spend fourteen dollars. You can't even eat because you're too busy talking about sister so and so. Yeah. <laughs> My good mother here, Mother Rachel, she does a feeding for, for seniors um, around town. And I was thinking about how serious that really is. Okay. And it may seem like it's trivial, nothing big, you know, da da da. But what I want y'all to recognize is it's not really the food that she's bringing, it's the environment. Y'all okay. not catching this. When she shows up with the food, that's just the conduit. For the conversation. Some of these people, nobody's coming by. Y'all not catching this. To visit them. Nobody's showing them any attention. Nobody's telling them that they're looking good for a change. Nobody telling them, God, I hope God is really helping you out of what you got going. Nobody. So sometimes what I'm trying to say is when God wants to use you to do something, you need to start taking it serious. Are you a serious Christian? 
know you're a Christian because you say he is. Yeah. <laughs> but are you a serious Christian? I know you're a serious cousin. I know that. I, I got that part. You're good at cussing and you're serious about it. I understand. But are you a serious Christian? Are you convicted when you don't do right by people? Yes. Does it not bother you? I, I was telling them last uh, earlier today. I'm, I'm learning what conviction is. Conviction is even when I'm right, I still feel bad. That's what conviction means to me. When, when we're not communicating the way we're supposed to communicate, and even though I know you dug, you dug me wrong, slung me under the bus, ran me over with a railroad train, all that is going on, but I still feel bad, Quan. Because I missed the relationship. That's how you know you're a serious Christian. If you can pop in here every week, Child, I ain't gonna say anything on the hook. I ain't stuff, huh? You ain't serious about this. You're serious about you. But you ain't serious about God. Because there's no way you can be fire baptized and the Holy Ghost feel. And it don't bother you that you got relationships that are broken and you ain't got a heart to want to fix it. You got to tell me that God ain't dealing with your mind, your body, your spirit about it. Because if you're not bringing a blessing, that you're still carrying a burden. So, so, he says here, let me see your hand. The problem must be seen. The man stretched out his hand. The problem must be serious. And this is what I love about it. Because you remember the guy at the, the, at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus asked him, would thou be made whole? Instead of him saying, yes, he went to talking about nobody would help him in the pool. God said, I ain't what I asked you. So many times God come to us with the answer, but we still keep asking questions. And we got to learn that when God comes to us, he means to tell us he's already fixed it. While you're trying to figure it out, I already done worked it out. I just need you to have a mindset of saying that it's already worked out. Do I got any blood white believer that at least wave their hand and say, Lord, I thank you that when I was down, you filled me up. I thank you when I was lost, you found me. I thank you when I was in depression, you brought me joy. Look at you, you're, you're a theologian, you like the Bible. Look at, look at this. He said to the man, let me see your hand. Uh -huh. Right? There's a problem. The man stretched out his hand. There's a purpose and a plan. Look at the last part. Okay. What did it say? And he was completely healed. There's a promise. God ain't set you up for nothing that ain't going to bring you greater. You want more, but he want to give you greater. I don't know about you. I don't need more. I need greater in God. Because whatever greater God give me, the more I can be greater with somebody else. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of sitting around being sick and tired, hoping somebody's going to grab the word and be the word. I'm just going to let God use me while I can still be used. Because not if but when I'm too old that I can't get up to be used. I can at least sit in my chair and wave my hand and have memories of when God used me. So the problem must be seen. The problem must be serious. The problem must be sanctified. Now, let me help you what that means. When there is inflammation or some form of infection, that area must be purified. They don't have surgery without telling you you have to sterilize the area yes. that's going to be worked on. Right. That's good. They make you take a shower with certain soap to make sure there's nothing lingering, God, Jesus, help me, that does not belong. Yeah. Some of us trying to go to surgery, uh -huh. but we ain't wrenched off. Well. 
We still got stuff that when Johnny hurt me. We still got stuff when Susie did me wrong. We still got stuff that I can't get out of my head. That's now affecting my body, my mind, and my spirit. But I want to encourage somebody today. If you're willing to let it all go and say, God, I want to be where you want me to be. I want to straighten it out right now. I want things working my way because they're working your way. I want things being blessed by me because they're being blessed by you. I want things brought to my attention because you are the attention person. I want a dominant voice uh, That's always your voice uh, Quit talking to myself uh, Cause self ain't never helped me uh, I need to talk to you uh, God I need you right now Now step into my life uh, Build me up uh, And set me on the road called straight So If you know anything About straightening out. Come on, sir. You can't straighten out unless there's something crooked. Sometimes God sets us up in our problems that don't feel good. And when it don't feel good, we struggle in the mindsets we're in. But I stopped by to tell you that you got to learn how to trust in the Lord. Get out of your religion so you can learn his relationship. Sometimes we find ourselves locked up where we can't do ourselves no good. But I got to tell you about it about the one who made it straight. See, 40 and two generations. Uh -huh. Straightening out showed up. Well. He was born in a manger. Yeah. He was wrapped in swallowed clothing. Uh -huh. Sound like he straightened it out to me. Found a blind man and made him see. Sounds like he straightened it out to me. Well. The withered man that he got his hand to be back normal. Sounds like he straightened it out to me. Sometimes you look like everything's over, like Lazarus did in the tomb. But Jesus stepped in, grabbed him by his hand, and called him by his name. Sometimes you just need God to step in and call you by your name. Sometimes you just got to say, Gina, I know you mean well, but I need you to be well by me. I know you want to do right, but I need you to live in my righteousness. Then sometimes, let your yay be yay, and your nay be nay. Sometimes, you got to let people know that I'm a welcome man. But I ain't no dope man. You ain't gonna walk in and do me in kind of way. Cause I serve a God that always bring greater. I heard this same God died and the world got dark. Sounds like he did some straightening to me. My God, the moon, red like blood. Sounds like he did some straightening to me. My God said the earth <laughs> real and rock like a drunken man. Sounds like he straightened it out to me. If there's anybody that said I had a problem, but I met the problem solver. He showed up in my house. He showed up in my life. He showed up on my kids. He showed up in my marriage. He showed up at my school. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of us getting up for stuff 
and sit down on Jesus. I don't know about you, but if you want greater, sometimes you got to call it out. Is there anybody that'll take two seconds? Say yes! I want greater. Say yes! I want greater. I want greater. Cause greater was in a bar or two all day Friday, Saturday night. They're greater late, but early one Sunday morning, he got up with some power. He got up with most power. If you believe that he got up to help you out your problems, fix your marriage, save your kids, heal your mama, take care of your daddy, get on your feet, say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, let God straighten it out. Let God straighten it out. Let God straighten it out. We honor God today. How many know he's a way maker? How many know he's a miracle worker? How many know he's a promise keeper? That's who he is. And sometimes, God, we lean in on too much of the world. Then we got no time for the word. And I want to encourage you. I need to see more faces on Thursday nights. I need to see more of you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Brothers and sisters, it's hard to stay in something that you're not studying in. Maybe somebody today, I want to give my life to Christ and part of my sins. That person is you, won't you come while there's still time? Maybe you're saying, you know what, I know the Lord for myself, but I need to be a part of a church home. I want to come and be a part of what God would have me to be a part of. I want to see what God would have me to learn so that I could be a blessing to somebody else. Won't you come? While there's still time. How much more you got to go through? How much more got to happen? You just got to believe and step in it. Maybe saying today, I just, I got some things I need to straighten out. And I want prayer. So I can have the confidence to walk into what God, I got to have some serious conversations with some people who don't want to be serious. I need them to know that we got to quit playing with this. God need to use us. I need to honor God righteously while I have time. Come on, come on, come on. Be serious about it. Come on. If you feel it, then you already should be coming. If you feel it, you should already be coming. Don't hesitate. Because the enemy will tell you that you're you all right. Don't let them people put their hands on you.
serious people up here today. They got serious things going on, God. And they need a serious God to deal with it. Lord, I ask right now, whatever it is that keeps us from you, build us afresh. Remove everything the entity of the devil tries to put before us. Heal our hearts, our minds, and our spirit to trust and love you. God, we openly come to say we're sorry and that we're wrong in every way that you would be. But we believe whatever's wrong, you will make right and make righteous. So right now, pour into our hearts. Cleanse away what does not belong. Teach us about true forgiveness. That we might walk in your work, live in your will, and stand by your way. God, whatever's wrong with our bodies right now, you ask for healing power. Set forth those who are infirm right now, Lord. Those who are afflicted in their mind, their body, and their spirit, heal them right now. We ask for special covering over mothers. Mother Porter right now, God, touch her heart. Build her up where you would have her to be. Mother Croker right now, Lord, build her up where you would have her to be. This is the biggest mother, Lord, where she would build her up where you'd have her to be. Lord, anyone else today, Lord, who's in any kind of sickness, any type of affliction, show them that you are God and God alone. And those who stand as ambassadors with those who are going through, teach us, God, how to be stronger and confident in what we do. Teach us how to not just be out of place, be in a place that when we show up, people are encouraged. People are edified, people are educated, and people are elevated by your word. God acts right now as we depart from this place but never from your presence. As we go back to our assigned seats, show us how to love, show us how to live, show us how to learn. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together like you love God. Prepare for communion this morning. It's power. 
So the Bible says Jesus asked the disciples to go to an upper room to prepare a supper. Yes, Reverend. Yeah, they did not realize that would be the last time that they would have dealt and dined with him in the physical body that he came in. For the next time he returned, he was of a new body. But he told them that he took the bread, he prayed, and he raked it. I'm going to ask Deacon Smith to pray over the bread and the cup. Blessed Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as humble as we know how. Lord, we ask that you touch us all. Touch our minds and our hearts and open us up to your will and to your way. And let us all re remember that you sacrificed so that we might have a right to the tree of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Those that can and will, you stand from the rear, my right, come to my left, full circle.
please stand. Is anyone who did not receive or would like to receive communion? Please come forward. of Jesus' body being broken. Take it and eat. The cup, representation of the blood that was shed upon the cross for our sins. Take it and drink. blood. Amen. We want to just stay right here and thank you for being with us today. The Bible said Jesus went out to the garden of Gethsemane. So we would depart the same way today. Love your neighbor before you leave and say, neighbor, let's straighten it out. God bless you. God keep you.